It's great to be back at Georgetown University for the fourth year in a row. And yes, the chamber is turning five years old um, this summer. When we first started this organization, we wanted to create a dedicated resource to bring both the policy community and the blockchain industry together so they could work on the many issues facing this ecosystem. And today, the Chamber of Digital Commerce represents over 200 companies that are pioneering in the blockchain space. And we've been really busy. Um, there's a lot of great initiatives happening in this town. We have many projects um, throughout uh, the Chamber's membership. We're meeting with a variety of stakeholders um, from the government, Congress, regulators, um, state governments, international governments, um, and others. And there's a lot of interesting things going on. It, it's a complicated, but it's a very uh, exciting time for the industry. I don't think this works. Maybe it does. <laughs> and Congress has also uh, been quite busy. Um, in the last congressional session, so in the 115th Congress between the years of uh, 2017 and 2018, we saw 47 pieces of legislation introduced that were related to blockchain technology. Um, we're now in the 116th Congress. It just opened in January. Um, and we've already seen 17 pieces of legislation introduced. Um, last year, our team monitored over 33 hearings that involved blockchain technology in some way. And then our, uh, the Congressional Blockchain Caucus, um, they've recently doubled their co-chairs. So they now have four co-chairs, and it's up to about 17 members. So the states have also capitalized on this opportunity and this momentum with respect to blockchain technology. Uh, we've seen uh, in last year alone 64 bills that were introduced um, in the states, which seemed like a, a huge momentum, but that was easily eclipsed by the last two months of this year alone, where we've seen 109 pieces of legislation introduced in the states related to blockchain in some way, which is an incredible number. Um, our state working group has been um, diligently um, following um, each piece of legislation. Um, and in fact, because of all the interest in uh, blockchain technology in the states, we developed a state legislators toolkit, which we published in December, which offered some um, guidance with respect to what blockchain is, what Bitcoin is, what smart contracts are, um, and then offered some uh, opportunities uh, for legislators if they uh, were so inclined to um, ideas for introducing uh, legislation in the states. Um, as you can see from some of the trends on the screen, um, there's five or six trends that we've identified in the types of legislation that have been introduced just in the last two months, and they track almost exactly the recommendations that we made. Um, however, given all of this activity and all of this momentum, not all legislation has had a positive impact. Um, so as an example of one of those kind of unintended consequences, um, think about smart contracts. Um, the word smart contracts alone would, uh, you know, invoke people to think, well, can you have a real valid um, contract on a blockchain? Can you sign, uh, validly sign a contract using blockchain technology? Um, that's a question that is, I had a lot of legal scholars um, thinking about that. We at the chamber also brought together some of um, the best legal minds who have dealt with electronic signatures and records for decades using internet technology um, together to put together a white paper and answer that question. Um, the title of that white paper is, is um, Smart Contracts, Is the Law Ready? And our paper says, yes, it is, with respect to um, the, the question of whether blockchain can um, store valid digital records and can it store valid electronic signatures. Um, we've also, um, we've seen, so we've tracked um, the legislation on this topic. Unfortunately, four states introduced legislation and enacted it last year. Um, which you think would be a positive force, but unfortunately they have different, differing definitions and differing um, enabling language. Um, so we're already starting to see a patchwork uh, of states' uh, legislation developing. Um, and just this year alone, we've had six new bills introduced, also attempting to do the same thing. Um, and this, has an, this is unnecessary first because the law already recognizes that as we've found and, and many others have, have determined. Um, but also the Uniform Law Commission who creates model statutes for states also very recently published a guidance note on their website saying not only is this unnecessary, um, but it can be detrimental. And so I encourage you to look at that up on the web too if you haven't seen that. Um, so that's an example of some of the unintended consequences that can be seen if, if we're not engaged with industry and with thought leaders in this space um, appropriately. And having issues like that, um, 
uh, a lack of clarity in the law and how it applies, um, especially towards new technologies, can stifle innovation. Um, in order to truly recognize the full potential of blockchain technology, we must have increased regulatory clarity and coordination. Um, two examples to highlight this point. Um, in the last congressional session, we had 27 different bills that were introduced in Congress, all calling for a study to combat the potential illicit use of virtual currency. So 27. And then uh, the next example is over at the Securities and Exchange Commission. Over the past couple years, the SEC has brought 30 enforcement actions related to digital assets, but they have not issued one piece of guidance that is both clear and binding on this same topic. And this is a big contributor why um, a lot of companies are choosing not to do business here and they're taking their companies um, and their business with them overseas. And part of that is due to um, the fact that, you know, we've seen a lot of activity involving financial services. Um, and that's where much of the legal conversation has started. And that makes sense. You know, Bitcoin was the first iteration of blockchain technology. It was designed to be a peer-to-peer -peer payment system. Um, so a lot of the, um, the dialogue and um, the, the potential for regulation and guidance and enforcement have all um, circulated around the financial services application. Um, and it, we do have a complex regulatory structure here in the U.S. that is different than other countries. Um, at the federal level, we have multiple prudential um, financial regulators that can regulate different types of technology, and sometimes they might uh, regulate it concurrently. At the same time, we have a, a state overlay. So the 50 states plus the territories all ha may have a voice um, in each of these areas. So it's, it's quite complex, and you can see on the slide um, at least four agencies um, applying their own statutes have come to different conclusions and determinations as to how to characterize digital assets. Is it a currency? Sometimes it's property, sometimes it's a commodity, and sometimes it's a security. And two of those agencies reside within the same um, department. Um, so it is a, we do have a complex financial structure here in the U.S. that many countries around the world do not have, which creates a challenge for us here. Yeah, and companies are having to spend significant legal fees to navigate uh, through this. We uh, at the Chamber, we're, we've dedicated our careers to this technology and we expect blockchain will create trillions of dollars worth of value to the global economy. Uh, many other developed nations around the world understand this and they are taking proactive steps to create an inviting environment to businesses to build um, their companies within their borders. Um, for example, we've seen a number of countries introduce and set up regulatory sandboxes. These are so companies can test new products and services, get them to market uh, quicker, faster, and more efficiently, um, and do so in a controlled regulatory environment. Um, one commercial indicator that we're following at the Chamber is around patent applications. Um, this chart was published in a report bar by the Chamber's Blockchain um, Intellectual Property Council um, and it shows the top five jurisdictions in the world um, where patents have been filed. Um, between the years of 2013 and 2017, we saw 843 patents filed globally. 280 of those came from the United States, um, and you can see um, who is taking the lead um, in this. Uh, blockchain, it, it's already making an economic imprint. There's currently about $130 billion worth of value that is stored in public blockchain networks. And according to IHS Market, they expect 10% of the world's GDP to be stored on blockchain by the year 2025, which is really not that far away. So as we've said, and I think there's waiting, okay, there we go. Um, there's a, financial service has been a, a huge um, uh, growth and in industry, growth in the industry of financial services. Uh, but that's not the only, you know, and that makes sense, again, because of, of um, Bitcoin and peer to and payments, and those were being the, the first iteration of the technology. Um, there's a lot of, and we're seeing a lot of, um, of that, part, segments of that industry being reimagined um, by the use of blockchain technology, whether it's with respect to remittances, Bitcoin futures contracts, um, trade finance, um, and others. Um, but there are many more, and I know we don't need to tell this group, uh, but there are many more um, industries that are impacted by blockchain technology. This slide gives an example of um, just a handful of, of some of those. Um, so starting with you know, cybersecurity, blockchain can serve as a foundational role with respect to um, critical infrastructures um, in the U.S. Think about NRG applications, for example. Um, digital identity and privacy, uh, some people think of that as the 
of the quintessential um, use case for blockchain technology, what it can do and how it can enable um, governments to um, interact with um, citizens and, and, and streamline the um, provision of services to um, free people in their country um, can save taxpayer dollars and, and make government services more efficient. Um, it can also enable more um, consumers um, in the U.S. to access um, digital um, and e-commerce. Um, we also have intellectual property. Um, so while the blockchain has a very strong open source community, there are also those that have decided to utilize IP um, strategies to protect their IP and blockchain, and those strategies can be useful in um, tracking supply chain and ownership, um, and also in just protecting trade secrets. Just to quickly touch on a few others, smart contracts have enormous economic potential due to their frictionless nature. We're already seeing um, businesses reimagine the way that they send and receive transactions with smart contracts. Um, we have uh, companies and members that are pioneering both in the healthcare and the insurance industries. Uh, many of the problems associated with the transfer, storage, and access to healthcare and insurance data can be addressed using blockchain. Um, and we've seen many chamber members introduce applications using blockchain in supply chain um, to track a product's um, entire path from manufacturer to the consumer. And the media industry will also have uh, feel an impact from this technology as well. Uh, the single biggest cost to most advertisers has become fraud. And blockchain technology can be used to verify and streamline a lot of operations throughout advertising and media. Uh, blockchain, it's going to impact pretty much every industry across our economy. The interesting thing too though is with all of these use cases out there, all of these industries that can be impacted, all of our members and all of you who are creating and developing and innovating in this space, the, the, the national conversation has really been a focus on bad actors and a focus on the potential for using um, the technology for illicit activity. A lot of that is driven by the headlines. Um, and you know, regulation and enforcement in those spaces is absolutely needed. We need to ensure that um, bad actors are weeded out to enable um, the efficient functioning of markets. Um, but that should not be the only conversation we're having. Um, we need to consolidate public support and public policy support um, for this technology um, and to shine a light on all of these applications um, that are also, that, that, that's why it's so important, why we need to make sure that we get this right. Um, th the message there is really just to balance the discourse. You know, while there is going to be um, the you know, enforcement and regulation and considerations there, we also need to think about how to help enable this technology for all of these um, useful, impactful, efficient, effective um, uses for this technology. Right, we wanna make sure that we're looking at this from a macro perspective when we go to make policy. And there are a lot of efforts underway um, to regulate in this space. Um, there is some coordination that's already happening, um, but more uh, needs to be done. If we want the United States to be a leader in advanced technologies, we have to take action um, and develop a plan in order to benefit from the opportunities that this technology will present. Um, it is time that the United States introduced a national strategy for blockchain. And just a few weeks ago, you um, may have seen, we published our national action plan for blockchain. And we're calling on the US government to do two things. The first is to demonstrate national leadership through uh, strong public support at the highest levels of government. And the second is to adopt a national action plan to coordinate all the stakeholders. So as, as you know, in furtherance of those two action items in this plan, we've developed um, eight guiding principles to help policymakers and stakeholders um, in their consideration of how to develop policy um, here. Um, so I'm just going to, I don't think it's moved forward yet. I think the um, screen's out of sync. Yeah, so um, the first one is, you know, the United States has been a leader um, in technology through industry. Um, the industry has innovated and has really driven historically um, um, our technology development in this space. And so that's why our very first guiding principle is to c encourage development by the private sector. Number two is to adopt a light touch regulatory approach. Uh, while the uh, industry is continuing to innovate and test new blockchain applications and protocols, enforcement actions should only be brought against clear violations of the law. Third, uh, businesses need to know the rules of the road before they engage 
um, in, in any um, endeavor. Um, action, you know, we need to apply um, situations to those rules in order to effectively engage and promote um, it, this technology. And so that's why, um, third, um, policy and regulation should be clear and established prior to enforcement. Uh, the number four is any regulation should be based on the function performed and not the technology. Um, in other words, do not regulate the under underlying technology. Where appropriate, uh, regulate how businesses are using the technology. Um, fifth, as we've seen with state money transmitter licensing, a state-by-state -state, um, approach um, with the federal overlays can be challenging and operate as a barrier to entry. Um, we must develop policy frameworks that achieve regulatory objectives, but that don't stymie growth and innovation. So therefore, number five is prevent a regulatory patchwork. Uh, number six, any necessary regulation um, should be developed with future innovations in mind. Uh, this technology is still evolving, and it should be free to evolve, and regulation should not impede its development. Uh, seventh is you know, blockchain um, platforms and can be complex. Uh, we need to make sure that uh, stakeholders understand how it's used, its risks and benefits, and then how, and then within that context, um, how to apply policy objectives to it. So for seventh is study and understand the unique attributes of blockchains and digital tokens. Uh, and the eighth is to establish an office to coordinate the U.S. blockchain strategy going forward. Given the complex environment that we are in, uh, we need a place to bring all of these efforts together to ensure we're doing this in a meaningful way. And one thing I'd note is that in all of these guiding principles and everything we've said, we're not promoting the idea that regulation needs to be developed. This is what we're saying here is that if regulation is contemplated, contemplated, these guiding principles need to be considered before that's done. So in summary, a few themes uh, to help move this action plan forward. Um, of course, education. We cannot um, have a conversation about the policy until we truly understand the technology, and government needs to put forward dedicated efforts to understand this technology in a meaningful um, and thoughtful way. Um, second is to coordinate. We need to coordinate stakeholders um, to develop um, appropriate policy across government. Um, and engage. Um, it's also important uh, that public policy is made with industry input. Government needs to hear from those who understand and know the technology best, and that's the industry, the innovators. The U.S. has been at the forefront of technology uh, leadership um, for decades. We need to have a coordinated plan to ensure that it stays that way. One way to do that, to kick this off, would be for the U.S. government to host a forum, bringing together um, industry and government stakeholders set the groundwork, set the framework um, to develop a, a coordinated plan with clear um, objectives to kick this off. Uh, since publishing our national action plan just a few weeks ago, we're already getting a lot of great feedback from our members and from different government stakeholders. We look forward to continuing this conversation with all of you throughout the DC Blockchain Summit this week, and we hope you will all join us in supporting and promoting the national action plan for blockchain. Thank you.